Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your April 2024 general reading. We are looking at the first half of April, roughly from the 1st to the 15th, and this reading is for the air sign of Aquarius. So glad you're here. Thanks for taking the time to watch these videos. I hope everyone is doing well. So Aquarius, this is for you for the first half of April 2024. If your sun, moon, rising, or Venus sign is in Aquarius, uh, if you're cross-watching for Aquarian, it is also relevant. Uh, these are general readings, as we always say, so they may resonate a little differently for everyone. If you know all of your sign placements or any of them, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, watch those videos as well for additional insight and perspective. If something really does hit home, if it really resonates with you and you'd like to take a deeper look, or you simply like the reading style. If you are interested in a personal reading with me for yourself or as a gift for someone else, please feel free to email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. You can see that contact info by clicking the description or title of this video. I would love to hear from you. I do offer a pretty wide array of reading options uh, in all areas of life, different types, lengths, budgets, styles, there's something in there for everyone. And I can usually get back to you the same day or within 24 hours with that information. And I am pretty diligent at, at uh, timely scheduling as well. So if you're interested, email me. All right, let's move right into this Aquarius and see what's in store for you for the first half of April 2024. I am using the, the Deluxe Royal Tarot, clarifying with the Gilded Tarot, both decks by artist Ciro Marchetti. We begin with the High Priestess, trusting your intuition or needing to pay attention to your intuition often implies <clears throat> kind of being quiet, um, similar to the hermit. Uh, this is about listening to your, some people call it higher self, some people call it gut instinct. Uh, it implies that there may be more going on beneath the surface that you need to explore. With that, we have the Six of Cups, which is primarily a card associated with history, people, places, situations, uh, we have a history with. It may be with this combination of cards, Aquarius, that <clears throat> you may have had <clears throat> rose-colored glasses about something, uh, something in the past, someone, a certain situation, and you may be seeing things a little differently now. There is an implication here that you may need to look a little deeper and trust what your intuition is telling you. Or get quiet when you're thinking about this situation and see what your gut, your intuition is telling you. Dreams and meditation may be important for some of you at this time. Next we have the Page of Wands. You may have an idea, something new that you want to start out on or be creating. This is the page of fire. It can represent also messages coming in. There's a sense of beginning and excitement here. Wanting to start down a new path with the moon. Strong energy here about intuition and the subconscious. So the moon may represent that you're maybe not quite sure about this. You may want to, it feels like you may want to start something or you may want to have a new or fresh approach to something, but the moon may be holding you back. The energy of the moon can represent also needing to trust your intuition. It can also represent that some of the challenges or the things that might be in your way are, you know, fears, doubts, insecurities about whether or not this is the right path or whether or not you should do something. Next we have the Seven of Swords, which is a card that's often associated with deceit or concealment or deception, um, you know, being underhanded. You know, primarily and originally this is a card of, of strategy. It requires, you know, it, it implies being careful, perhaps being clever, being cunning. Strategies, you know, almost always done behind closed doors because you don't want everyone to know about it, whether it's positive or negative. 
uh, I mean, you know, everyone's different. And this is a general reading. It's a card of strategy. Um, it, it may be that, well, let's see what's coming with it. The world bringing something to completion or taking something to another level. The world is the last major arcana card in the tarot. So it represents a cycle of the tarot is done. We go through many cycles in our life. The first card is the fool. The last is the world. In between, all the cards represent a certain part of our journey, a chapter, a set of chapters that are significant, right? So the world represents a cycle ending so a new one can begin. So this can be two different things. It can be, you know, how to bring something to a final end or how to take it from where it's at to a different level. It may be that some of you with the Seven of Swords are thinking about, at the very least, it implies that you're going to need to be clear, that you are you need to be careful, clever about this. But it may be too, with some of this other fuzziness and needing to trust your intuition, it may be that Some of you may be looking at a new path or a new addressing something in a different way. It may be that you in the past were harboring assumptions about a certain situation or a person's motives and you felt you were right, but maybe it turns out that perhaps you weren't right. And you may be thinking of, this feels very specific to somebody, and it may be that you're like, okay, well, can I fix this? Can I, can we kind of do a, a restart on this? Um, you may be, you know, thinking of different ways to do it. Others of you, it feels like there's something that you're thinking about that you want something new, a new path or a new start in something or, you know, wanting to take something in a different direction to have success in it. Some of you may be thinking about questionable ways of doing it with that seven of swords. And again, whether it's positive or negative, I mean, only you can decide that based on your own morals and ethics, right? Um, you know, justice is reaping what you sow, whatever intention you put into something it will come back to you, whether that's positive or negative. So the implication is always, you know, to be as honest and clear and transparent about something as you can, even if you're trying to end something that you think might be difficult or painful. So you need to go about it in a sneaky way. It's typically not advised because, for example, like ending a relationship because you met somebody else that you, you want to pursue something with. It's never an easy situation. Um, but there is a, an honest, clear way to go about doing it. So, I mean, it may be that for some of you, it may not be. This can be in any area of life. Those of you for whom this resonates will know exactly what this is about. But it feels like there's, uh, there's some kind of morals or ethics tied up in here. And again, some of you, this is about a situation from the past that you viewed a certain way. And now you're thinking that you, maybe over time, you're coming to see that it's it wasn't what you thought it was. Maybe a person's motives weren't what they thought they, you, you, it was. And now you're wondering if you can make the situation better or resolve it in some way, have a new start on it, but you're unclear as to how to go about doing it. The whole underlying energy that I'm getting is, do I, can I do this? Is this the right thing to do? And what's the right way to go about doing it? From the bottom of the deck, <laughs> from the bottom of the deck representing overall energy and theme is the five of wands Aquarius so the five of wands is about conflict internal conflict conflict within yourself perhaps external conflict with other people maybe a combination of both it can represent competitive energy too. everybody vying for the same thing petty gossip rumor mongering fighting about the same thing or arguing about the same old argue you know the same argument over and over and over again now, it can be a card of competition. For, so for some of you, again, there may be some new thing. Uh, you have an, an idea or something of that sort, something that you want, something that you ultimately want to accomplish. Um, and you may be thinking of maybe sneaky or clever ways, possibly even underhanded ways to come out on top to win, right? But you have to gauge what the morals and ethics are. Again, other, others of you, I'm getting quite strongly that there was a situation in the past, something that you went, you went, that was 
not good, unpleasant, or painful. Perhaps you thought it at the time that it was this certain thing. You made judgments about it, assumptions about it. You thought you were right, maybe assumptions about what somebody did or what their motives were. And you've come to see over time that it's it's not right. It wasn't right. You know, maybe you did some stuff and now you're thinking that wasn't right. Maybe I need, how can I fix this situation? So let's peel it back just a little bit. Let's take a look at that overall energy of the five of wands. The Five of Cups, yeah, this is a card of grief, loss, regret. Looking at something that happened in the past, right? A loss, uh, again, maybe <clears throat> grief, sorrow. I wish I hadn't done that. This is no longer there and I'm sorry it's not there anymore. But there are still two cups upright and full, which in, in regards, in, you know, for those of you for whom this resonates about trying to make a situation that was bad, um, trying to resolve a situation because perhaps you did or said some things that y you you see now were perhaps not the right things. Hmm. Let's take a look. <coughs> Let's take a look at that high priestess and the six of cups. I think for some of you, it may be that you're like, but it was so bad and I was so entrenched or this, we were so, because I'm getting an argument between two people here for some of you about some certain situations. You went on and on and on about it, or it went on and on. The other person said, no, it's not that. It was this. And you're like, nope, it was this. I know it was. And now you're coming to see perhaps that how you looked at it then wasn't accurate, but it some of you it feels like the challenge is I don't know it's been so much time and all of that is it worth trying to fix this or let's take a look at this high priestess six of cups yeah the eight of swords this is a card that that you know you you, you may be feeling like your hands are tied here like I can't I can't this is a card that represents somebody who feels you know um, that there's a situation that they don't like, but they feel they can't get out of it. You know, like they've gotten themselves into something and, and now they can't get out of it. They're too deeply entrenched. The external challenges are too great. But it's somewhat illusionary. Not that your fears, worries, concerns are invalid, but swords are governed by the element of air, which governs everything that goes on in our mind, our intellectual landscape, thoughts, ideas, belief systems, ideologies, perspectives. You can might not be easy but you can the eight of swords wants to tell you that you can't the world again the six of cups again <clears throat> yeah there's a situation here that needs to be resolved at the very least it neither needs, needs to be resolved so you can get free of it once and for all <clears throat> or it needs to be resolved so you can take something to another level there's an opportunity here to do it with a judgment card will you judgment is like a call to action and it could really 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 change things <clears throat> now like justice it's sort of a reap what you sow card <clears throat> this is a card of, of accountability for what you choose not what you think not what you wish but what you actually do either way and you have to live with the consequences of that so choose carefully there's kind of a strong implication here Aquarius that a situation from the past which was not good can be resolved it can be healed but you have to act and not give in to this eight of swords energy that I can't I can't I can't because of this or because it was so old or because it was so bad or because this I don't want to admit I made a mistake or Again, for those of you who are trying to acquire something or you feel you're in competition with other people, there's an energy here or a temptation of, well, maybe I need to be underhanded to do it. Again, judgment does imply the best way to do it is with as much honesty, openness, clarity, transparency, and morals and ethics as possible. Let's take a look at that page of wands, the moon. Death, final endings, five of swords, winning at all costs, no matter what that is, and the moon again. 
some of you, <clears throat> you may be thinking, some of you, there's, uh, there's a group of you out there, there's like, being, uh, you've come to the idea, you come to the realization that you were wrong about something from the past, maybe even the long ago past. It keeps pressing on you, right? But here, again, it feels like, should I just, just leave it where it is and move on? Or should I try and do something about it? Others of you, it, it's okay to do this thing that I want. I'm maybe considering doing some particularly, maybe not all that ethical things. Be careful of that. Seven of Swords, the world. There's nothing wrong with being strategic and being secretive in your, in your strategy. But it's all about, you know, morals and ethics are often linked to what we do that could affect other people in a negative way right or a positive way so the seven of swords at the very least implies that you should you know ask yourself you know since we do reap what we sow in one way or another eventually you know is it worth it what's the best way to go about doing this taking something to another level or bringing it to an end the hermit you've got some real introspective cards here the, the the high priestess, the moon twice, the hermit, all of these cards represent that there is a lot of self-growth and self-realization and wisdom to be gained here, but it's about kind of going within and examining things in an honest and clear way in order to do that. The Nine of Swords, stress over and fear over an unknown future. And this is also about making something worse in your head than might actually fit the external reality. Well, what if this happens? This horrible thing could happen. What if I don't do this? This horrible thing could happen, right? Again, for those of you that need to make something right that you discovered you maybe did wrong in the past, this is a card along with that Eight of Swords that wants to say, just leave it in the past. It's no good to explore it. <clears throat> but there's an energy here that if something keeps pressing on you, it needs, to, you, you, you it needs to be dealt with and it's not going to be as bad as you think it is. The Fool, the very first major arcana card in the tarot. Again, this is about laying something to rest once and for all and moving forward for some of you. This is about uh, others of you that are trying to acquire something and you're, you're exploring all kinds of different ways in order to get what you want. Um, the Fool is about, you know, taking a different path, um, getting out of your comfort zone and taking a risk. Being clever, being smart, yes, but also check your motives and your ethics about it as well. So let's end with advice, guidance, feedback from Spirit. Seven of Pentacles. Take a look at what you have invested. What do you have to gain? What do you really have to lose? The Knight of Swords. Move forward with clarity, honesty, be action-oriented and decisive about it. This is also about clear and open communication so that you can have a new start here, a fresh new start with the Ace of Wands one way or the other. Whether it's fixing an old situation or starting on a new path, make sure to, oh, here's justice, make sure to check your morals, your honor, your, honor, your ethics, um, you know, reaping what you sow. It means that the outcome of something is entirely dependent on what our intention is that we put into our actions. Seven of Swords again. Be careful that what you do is on the level or above board the star renewed restored hope faith and optimism typically after something difficult um, happened particularly those of you who are trying to deal with an issue from the past i mean both of these cards together represent that there is a chance you know that there's an opportunity for renewal moving forward but again it's all dependent on how you do it so I'm going to leave that there, Aquarius. Those are your messages for the first half of April. I hope that uh, for those of you for whom they resonated, that they were helpful, useful. 
gave you something to chew on. Again, if it did resonate, if it did hit home, if it's something you'd like to pull the curtain back on a bit and take a deeper look, or you simply like the reading style if you are interested in a personal reading with me for yourself as a gift for someone else, please email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. You can see that contact info um, by clicking on the description or title of this video. I would be delighted to hear from you and delighted to work with you. I will see you all in a couple of weeks for the April mid-month readings. Until then, stay safe and well. Hope to see you back here again soon. Bye-bye.